Okay, well now we're going to go over the exterior angle inequality, and this turns out to be a pretty useful um, tool to prove several important things about triangles. And it says that if the distance metric is unbounded, then the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is greater than the measure of either of its remote interior angles. And this is also true if the distance metric is bounded with least upper bound u, and the triangle has all sides of lengths less than u over 2. Uh, we have a counterexample to this in the spherical case where, uh, where we have a triangle with two right angles, two sides of length pi over 2. That's going to be a counterexample to this. But if we, but if we have, um, if we didn't have this condition here. But with this condition about all sides having length less than u over 2, less than pi over 2 in spherical, then this does work out. And so I'm going to go ahead and prove this. And we're going to illustrate this in uh, all three geometries here. So we have a Euclidean il illustration on the left. In blue and green in the middle, we have the hyperbolic illustration. And on the right, we have the uh, uh, stereographic projection of a spherical uh, example there. And so the first thing is we're just given any triangle ABC. And in the case of the this one over here, we're going to be given that its uh, side lengths are less than uh, pi over 2. Okay, which we'll, we'll come to that part later when we need it. So, every line segment has a unique midpoint in all these geometries. That's given to us by Proposition 20, so we're going to um, create that midpoint. And, uh, of course, that means that the distance from... Uh, uh, BM to is the same as the distance from uh, MC, so that should be B there. Okay. Now we're just going to pick another point here, D, so that C is between A and D. So extend side AC out a bit, so so that we get a point D out there. And then we're going to have an exterior angle here, B, C, D. And that's the exterior angle is the angle that we're going to be uh, concerned with. And we know we can always extend out to another point out there by Proposition 10F. Let's take a quick look at 10F because actually I added this uh, a while to Proposition 10. So let me go back and show you that. Uh, It's very much in the same spirit as this proposition. It says, given a pair of non -dis a distinct non-antipodal points A and B, then there exist infinitely many points C between A and B, infinitely many points C, so that A is between uh, C and B, and infinitely many points C such that B is between A and C. So now I can extend the line segment either direction, and there's points in the middle on the line segment. There are infinitely many of those. And so that's that kind of is in the spirit of that same question there, so I'll, I added that to that theorem. The proof is very similar to what we did there. Okay, so we know we can extend that out. So next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to now take uh, uh, the ray going from A through M, and we're going to go out on that ray a distance twice what it is from A to M. Now, A to M is some, some distance, and if we double that distance, then there's exactly one point on that ray with that distance. At least in Euclidean and, and uh, hyperbolic geometry, that's true because these line segments go on forever. We have to be a little careful about this in the, uh, in the spherical because this is actually where the proof can break down. If, uh, if we, were, we have a problem, if, if we're not careful here. So if this distance A to M is... Uh, pi over 2 or more, then when you double it, there is no, the ray doesn't go out that long. So, but if we know that the distance from A to M is less than pi over 2, then we can, the, we, the, the ray is sufficiently long enough for us to, to go out there and find such a point. And basically, uh, the, it has to do with our coordinate system for a ray. And this is kind of summarized in Proposition 45D. You can look that up. It says we can do this. Now, how do we know that we can do this? Well, one of our hypotheses says 
that if the distance metric is bounded, okay, and uh, we know that the distance is less than, than u over 2, power over 2, and we know this is true because uh, if all the sides have distance length less than pi over 2, then any CVN is going to have less than that. And that's Proposition 45D. And that is, uh, let's take a look at that real fast. Proposition 45D, it says A, B, and A, C are less than pi over 2. A CVN, A, D to A, B, C, triangle A, B, C, has length less than U over 2. And uh, so we're, we're throwing that back, the proof of that part back to Proposition 45. But, but once that is proved, then we have, we can go forward here. And like I said, we do need that for this part of the proof. Right there is the only place where we have to be careful about the spherical geometry. And of course, the counter example you have, if you don't have the links less than U or 2, comes basically right there. Okay? So now we know that we have some, um, some vertical angles here. So B, M, A, and, and uh, C, M, F are vertical angles with, with whichever picture you're looking at, and so they are congruent. So we've got a pair of congruent angles that are vertical angles. Now if you notice what we've got is we made, this is the midpoint, by the, we chose the midpoint, so this is, these two segments are congruent, B, M, and C, M. And we made sure that F was out here twice as far as A to M, so we know A to M is the same as from F to M. And the vertical angles are congruent. So if you look, we have side, uh, side, angle, and side congruent in all three demonstrations of that. And so we have some congruent triangles. AMB is congruent to FMC, and that's by the side angle side postulate. Notice I put what statements above gave me that hypothesis. And of course, then corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or in other words, the definition of congruent triangles and the fact that we have some says that we have a pair of corresponding angles that are congruent, and this is what we're after while we did this construction. So these, these ones that I have marked in orange here at B and this one here at C are congruent. Now what we're going to show is that F is in the interior of this angle BCD, and uh, this, so therefore you can add these two angles here together to get this angle of this, ex measure of this exterior angle, so the measure of the exterior angle is more than that orange angle, which is the angle at B, and so we've, we've got it bigger than B. And that's, uh, that's the fin that's the finish out our argument, well, almost finish out our argument. And so, first of all, we need to make it, uh, the argument that it's in the interior, and we notice that F, by the way, we did it since, since this line segment crosses line BC, and this line segment, this also crosses, segment AD also crosses line BC, then F and D must be on the same side of this line. And then we also have, uh, okay, so that's, a, that's a, that, so it's on the, the, it's on the D side of uh, BC, line BC, and then it's on, we want to show that it's on the B side of CD, well, uh, again, we have, um, well, at least it's on the M side because these two, this line segment does not intersect this line, and these, uh, this line segment doesn't either. So this is going to give us, uh, they're on the same side there. And so that puts it in the interior of that angle, and since it's in the interior of the angle, then I can do this thing about the angles adding up so that these two angles here add up to the angle that measure the exterior angle. Their measures add up, I should say. And so, um, now what do we have? Well, since you're adding two measures together here, and this one has to be positive, but they both have to be positive, we get the measure of this one is larger than the measure of FCB, but FCB is really just another name for angle ABC. So we have established that if we draw an exterior angle right here, then the side, if we look at the, uh, the, the side that, that helps form that angle, and we look at the other end of that endpoint down there, that angle at that one has to be smaller a measure than the exterior angle, or the exterior angle has to be larger. Okay, well the next thing to do is if you look at the vertical angle down here, okay, it has to be larger than measure of angle A, but the vertical angles 
uh, have the same measure. And so that's my next statement. And so, in fact, that line, that angle was greater than both a measure of angle A and the measure of angle B, not added together, but greater than them separately. And it now, since we didn't matter, we just picked arbitrary labeling for A, B, and C. So basically do the, the same construction at any vertex, and we get that every exterior angle has a measure uh, that is greater than either uh, of its either uh, of its remote interior angles. Okay. And that that gets it. Okay, so that proves the exterior angle inequality. And that turns out to be an important thing to help prove uh, actually several other results.